So something that might be tripping a few of you up is where you are using, for example, an API response and you are trying to check to see if something is equal to something, okay? You're kind of thinking, hang on a minute, I've got, an, it's showing me an error with inside Flutterflow. That doesn't make any sense. Why can't I check to see if this value is equal to another value? So let me show you then what we've got here. I've got a very simple API response here that's coming down. I've got this value called new or upcoming or new down here. And um, what I need to do is I need to check to see if new is equal to new. If it is, then I would like it to be a different color. And of course, if it's upcoming, I would like that to be a different color as well. So let me show you the problem with inside Flutterfoot and then let me show you how to simply solve it. Okay, so here we are then with inside the widget tree. Let me first show you the API call. Let me just show you what's coming back. If I just hit on the API calls option here, here's the articles here. If I just do the response and test and say test API call, here is my API response here. And you can see here, I've got this string value of, uh, of new that's come back with inside this one called status. We know it's under content. It's a content.status and we've got new. And of course, if I scroll down here, a little bit further, you can see here we've got one called like upcoming and stuff like that. So that's all set for us. So let me now show you the actual problem. And this is going to be probably very similar to what you're probably seeing inside your own applications when you're trying to do this kind of thing. So let's move back over to the actual widget tree here. So here it is. This is the bit that we want. So we know we've got the, the, the actual term coming out here. It's going to say new or upcoming or something like that. But of course, I want to set a little bit of styling on this. Of course, I want to check for that. So if I go down here, I want to go to the text color. Let's just choose the little selector here now what I need to is I need to do now this um, if condition I need to say if it's uh, if it's new or if it's upcoming or so, or whatever the status is then set this particular color so of course how would you do that well you'll just go down into this if then else just choose that and here we are into this first condition so let's say for example that I need to check to see if the status is equal to new so what I would do is I would come here I would choose this I would then go to a conditions uh, to conditions and I would now set my first a single condition so I just choose that now my first value I now need to select this and it's going to be my article item which of course is each of my children with inside this particular list view here so choose article item now I'm going to go to the JSON pass on route now work my way down that JSON response so of course if you remember it was content and then it was status like that so that's what I need to check against. I'm going to hit confirm and I'm going to say it's equal to, and this is where I now want to set the new value. I want to say new. So if I go to second value and now I'm here and I'm just going to choose the, this option here. Now I'm going to think, okay, so oh, I'm, I'm in a bit of a bit of, bit of a pickle now, a bit of a bit of trouble because I can't actually say, well, if my status is equal to the value of new. So what do I do? Well, the only option I've got available to me is this one here called combine text. So I thought, okay, well, I'll choose combine text. So this allows me to actually type in a piece of text. I can say new. Okay, that's great. Hit confirm. Oh, it says the current variable is not valid. Okay, so we've just got a problem here, right? This Flutterflow is just not allowing us to actually uh, actually check against this value called new using combined text. So you can see the reason for it, and that is if I just scroll up here, you can see that what we're looking for here is we're looking for a Boolean value to come back. We, in order for us to, to check for this condition, it needs to return back a true or a false. Now, of course, I can't actually check this equal to, so what am I gonna do here? I still need to check for this. So the way that you solve this particular problem is that you need to reach out to a custom function. You need to create a really, really reusable custom function, which is just going to allow you to pass in a two, two values. One is the actual value of the status. So in this case, it's going to be new. And then, of course, I then need to say what value am I checking against, which is going to be new again. So new and new. And I need to return back if those strings match a true or a false. So let's now create that custom function and then we can come back here and then we can actually then fix this particular problem. So let's now move over to the actual custom code option here, just on the left hand side. Let's now add a brand new function. So I'm going to just call this one is, oh, just do that, is string match like that really really straightforward now i'm going to need to return a type of boolean so i need to return back this true or false if my values match just take the nullable off here so i'm always going to return back a true or a false now i need to define my argument so i'm just going to select this and of course the first one's going to be input string one 
and it's going to be a type string. It's not going to be nullable. Add argument again, and I'm going to type in input string two. So I'm going to take nullable off. So it's two strings that is going in. That's good. And you can see that up here is string match. Of course, this is going to show like a red squiggly underline here because at the moment I've not passed any code in here to actually return back the true or the false. Now, how do you do this? Well, really simple. It's one line you need to do. So you just type in return. And all I'm simply going to do here is type in input string one is double equals to input string two. And then just put a little semicolon there at the end. So really all this is doing here is just going to say if these two strings match then of course it's going to return me back here a true if it's anything but that it's going to return me back a false super super simple stuff hit save function just let the actual compilation do its thing so let's just click on this option here it's going to compile for me and then hopefully that little red will disappear there we go that's perfect so we've now got our custom function let's now go back to where we were and let's now sort that problem out so with the content status selected here, let's just move down here. Let's go to the text color. Let's now go back to this conditional if then else, just choose that. And now I can go back here and now set my condition. So I'm just gonna choose this. Now what I need to do is I now need to call out to my custom function. If I just scroll down here, I've got my custom function and I'm gonna choose this one here called is string match. Just choose that. Now this is gonna require two values to go in. So firstly, I need to pass in the actual status from my API response. I'm just going to choose this. I'm going to choose my article item. I'm going to just change to my JSON path and I'm going to choose dot content dot status. That's all I need to do. Confirm. And of course, I now need to see if this is the, of the value of new. So I'm just going to type in new here. Quite simple. Just hit confirm. Okay. So now all I need to do now is I've now got that actually added. All I need now to do is set my color. So this is going to basically just hover over this. Actually, it's quite it's quite self-explanatory. What it's doing is if the condition above is true. So if they match, then of course we can then set the actual color. So in this instance, I'm just going to change my color. And just for this application here, I'm just going to set like a like a blue color here. Uh, let's just move up here. Let's just go up here. Let's just choose a blue color. Just say use color like that. And of course, I can now come down here. I can actually add another condition in. So if I just choose this one here and go to, uh, in fact, we can do it a very simple way. Actually, what I can do is I can just select this here. I can actually now copy this. If I just say copy variable, if I now go actually here and then actually paste that variable in, that saves me going through all of the uh, all of the reset up that I've just done. So I can actually now say if this status here is then one of the other uh, statuses itself. I'm just going to type in preview, just hit confirm. And I'm just going to change my color maybe to say like a like an orangey color there. That's good. And then I'm just going to do um, everything but thou. So if, of course, if it's one of the other ones, then of course, we'll just probably keep this maybe as let's say, let's just do the green for now, just for good measure. So there we go. I've got all my color selected. Just hit confirm. Now, if I now go back to the test mode here, Okay, so here we are now running in test mode, as you can quite clearly see now I have my colors set. So really, really straightforward, as you can see, not a difficult thing to actually do. And of course, once you've got that custom function created, it can be reused throughout the whole of your application. So um, I hope you found that useful. Of course, I'm hoping in the future that the Flutterflow team will actually make some additions to the product, which will make this little check much easier. So, of course, if you like this video and you like this type of quick tip stuff, then please do obviously like the video. And of course, please do subscribe to the channel. Loads of stuff on my channel regarding Flutterflow and uh, the no code space. So it's good to have you part of the community. And um, until that until that next video drops, I'll see you in the next one.